Hey, good morning. Welcome back. We're in 1 Samuel chapter 24. David, uh, Saul was in the cave. David could have killed him. He was right there in the cave with him. Saul didn't know it. David chose not to. Saul comes out of the cave. David comes out of the cave and he sort of says, look, here's evidence. I could have killed you, but I didn't. Now Saul's going to respond. Let's listen to it. We're looking at verses 16 through 22. So it was when David had finished speaking these words to Saul that Saul said, is this your voice, my son David? And Saul lifted up his voice and wept. Then he said to David, You are more righteous than I, for you have rewarded me with good, whereas I have rewarded you with evil. And you have shown this day how you have dealt well with me, for when the Lord delivered me into your hand, you did not kill me. For if a man finds his enemy, will he let him get away safely? Therefore may the Lord reward you with good for what you have done to me this day. And now I... I know indeed that you shall surely be king, and that the kingdom of Israel shall be established in your hand. Therefore, swear now to me by the Lord that you will not cut off my descendants after me, and that you will not destroy my name from my father's house. So David swore to Saul, and Saul went home. But David and his men went up to the stronghold. That last bit's kind of interesting, isn't it? Even though Saul says he is not going to pursue David, David has had enough experience with Saul to know what, you know, tomorrow morning he could have a totally different spirit, a totally different attitude Saul could. So David and his men kind of stay out there in the wilderness where they're not going to be locked in, trapped in, not subject to Saul's wild swings in uh, attitude. But anyway, let's look at the first part of this. Saul has an interesting response here. And I think God was working through this, don't you? Because Saul lifts up his voice and weeps. It seems like there could be some true repentance going on here on Saul's part. He admits that he's done evil. He, he praises David for doing good. So there's, there's some really good pieces here. Saul, sadly, you know, this isn't, he's not going to have a good ending. But here we see him in a moment, a good moment. The Spirit of God is working on Saul, and he's doing that because specifically uh, uh, flowing out from David's mercy towards Saul. And sometimes the Spirit of God will work for you and I in the very same way if we reach out with mercy toward others who may be harassing or persecuting us, just as Saul was to David. So again, there's a pattern here. There's something hopeful here something encouraging here. Even Saul, who's a pretty hardened character by now, even Saul seems to be uh, having a, he's weeping, he's weeping, he's repenting, even at least if it's only maybe for a short time, here it is. May God do a work for people. And God is the judge of hearts, not you, not me. Let's pray. Dear Father in heaven, thank you for the, what appears to be a solemn repentance on Saul's part. Again, Lord, we look to you, you give us hope. Jesus is the Prince of Peace, you can give us hope and peace with our brethren and with others who seem to be determined to have trouble with us. Help us, Lord, to, to have boldness in your service, but also to seek first peace in your service, just like David did. Thank you for hearing our prayer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So, hey, good lessons here from David. Uh, took his life in his hand, but it looks like made a big dent there for Saul. Hey, you God be with you today in all that you do. Be a prince of peace for the prince of peace.